Hey guys, Nick here and welcome back to GamerJube. So in today's video, I wanted to go through a couple of things that I think should be in the upcoming Resident Evil 8 Village. So in the recent months, we haven't really seen too much come from Resident Evil 8. We've seen a couple of trailers and we've actually seen that new gameplay video with tennis star Naomi Osaka. That was pretty cool and we got to see a little bit more of the werewolves and the environments as well in Resident Evil 8. But in this video, I wanted to talk a little bit more about that video and the werewolves that we see in that video. Also some weapons and what we're going to get with the merchant and what I think should happen in Resident Evil 8. Alrighty guys, but before we start today's video, if you could please consider leaving a like, commenting and subscribing as it helps out a lot and it's greatly appreciated. Alrighty, let's get into it. So first off, let's start with the latest gameplay video that they released. So this video shows us more of the environments of Resident Evil Village, which look great. I'm really liking the creepy, snowy village vibe. And I get the feeling there's going to be lots of blood in that pure white snow, especially with a game like Resident Evil. We also get a look at the supposed werewolf creatures that seem to be hunting the player. It's really exciting to see some in-game footage of the enemies, and I can only hope that they turn out to be a very menacing and difficult enemy to hide from. So on the topic of the werewolves, let's start the list off with what they need to bring to Resident Evil 8 Village. Like I said, these enemies have to be very menacing and completely fill you with dread. The moment you hear their howls getting closer in the distance, the player should have the choice to either hide or take them on. But taking them head on would be a risk as I'd imagine these enemies would be quite difficult to kill. I'd really like to see the werewolf creatures moving fast and agile. I feel like this would open the door to plenty of jump scares with enemies quickly bursting through doors and, when you least suspect it, scaring the hell out of you. We also saw what looked to be a new shotgun that we haven't seen in the trailers before. Well, at least I haven't seen before. I have to imagine that these werewolf enemies would need some decent stopping power from a shotgun to slow them down and eventually weaken them so you can deal some more damage. Also, since these are werewolves and they are essentially a canine creature, it would be pretty cool if they can actually sniff you out whilst you're hiding. I do think a cat and mouse mechanic would work really well here, and the fact that the player might have to choose whether to hide or take on the enemy head on would be pretty cool, whether you want to conserve your ammunition or take out the creatures here and there so they never appear and try to get you at a later time. Now that I've got my hands on the PS5 and I've used the DualSense controller, I'd really be interested to see what they can do with the haptic feedback. It has been confirmed that it will be in the game. But what I'd definitely like to see is the adaptive triggers have some resistance with heavier weapons. For instance, when using the shotgun, I'd like to see the right trigger be a little bit harder to push and actually give the feeling of pulling back the trigger on a powerful weapon. As for the handguns, we could feel maybe some vibration for the loading of a magazine or the cocking back of the pistol. Or maybe the right trigger could pop back a little bit in resistance when firing a machine gun. And as for the weapons themselves, I do feel like we are going to get similar weapons to Resident Evil 7. But with Resident Evil 8, where we have Ethan as a playable character and Chris, I do think we are going to get a mix of modern weapons and old weapons. I feel like Ethan's gameplay will revolve more around older style weapons like hunting rifles, shotguns and revolvers, whereas Chris's campaign I feel like they're going to see more modern weapons like assault shotguns, machine guns and grenade launchers. But I do hope in Chris's campaign those weapons somehow get taken from him and he has to start the mission with nothing but his knife and then slowly accrues his weapons over time. I feel like that lines up more with the classic Resident Evil fashion and makes some more intense horror with Chris's campaign, and not being completely fully equipped and armed to the teeth with guns. As for the ammunition for these guns, I do think we are going to see the same ammo boxes that we did see in Resident Evil 7. But I do wonder if they are actually going to change the design of these ammo boxes considering that the characters are in a new country. Also, another thing that makes me wonder about Chris's part of the game is if they're going to make it more action oriented like the Not A Hero DLC, or if it'll have the same gameplay style. In that DLC, Chris actually had the ability to use grenades, and I wonder if they are actually going to take grenades into this new game. Also in the Not A Hero DLC, I wasn't really the biggest fan of the heads up display. I did think it looked a little bit more action oriented, and it kind of took away a little bit of that Resident Evil charm. 
Me personally, I think Resident Evil 8 should really do away with a lot of the heads up display. I think that'll add a lot to the immersion and the realism of the game. Now, I'd like to talk about the new supposed merchant that we are getting in Resident Evil 8. Now, by the latest trailer we've seen, it does appear to be this gentleman as the merchant. Whereas in other rumours, it was supposed to be the witch that was the merchant, but now I do think it looks like this character. So, I wonder what kind of weapons and goods he'll sell, and if he'll be available to both Chris and Ethan throughout the game. One thing I think the merchant should definitely sell is weapon upgrade kits, or other upgrades similar to the steroids and stabilizers from the last game. Now, how Ethan and Chris will earn currency is another thing. Now, I don't think this is going to be the type of game where you shoot the enemies and glowing bags and chests of money appear, but instead, I feel like since the enemies for the most part are still clothed when you down them, there could be the possibility to loot their bodies and check their pockets. Or you could find currency in drawers and cupboards when searching the environments. Something that should definitely be in the game is the ability to sell items you find to the merchant. So maybe it might be similar to Resident Evil 4 where you find gems and trinkets and you sell them for money. Regardless of how this supposed merchant character will work, I'm still excited to see what they're going to do with this character and how the mechanic of purchasing items works. Alrighty guys, that's all we have for today's video. If you enjoyed, please consider leaving a like, commenting, and subscribing as it helps out a lot and it's greatly appreciated. Also, let me know down in the comments below what you actually want to see from Resident Evil 8. Also stay tuned because we are going to be doing multiple parts of this series and we're going to go through what I reckon we should have in Resident Evil 8. Alrighty guys, until the next one, I'll catch you later. Bye.